Today is Thursday, November 7, 2024. It's about 8, 10 a.m. Eastern. I'm Sam, and these are the levels for today. Under typical market conditions, these levels of possible support and or resistance should give us opportunities to trade the E-minis, and it all depends on how price is acting if and when the SPY hits a level. As of right now, they look like they could gap up again at the open, another hour and a half or less than that, until the opening bell, so we'll see. Price has already hit 592.88, the level there, and spent some time knocking on that door. It looks like they want to break through that resistance and keep going. In fact, it looks like they're above that now at 592.90. That's where current price is. You can see it right here. But be aware that at some point, the party is going to break up and price will stall out. There's the FOMC interest rate decision this afternoon, so that announcement will likely affect the market. And 600 is getting closer. If they continue to climb, the ES will hit 6,000 first. The zone up here at these two levels in the dashed lines are about where the E-minis will hit 6,000, if I did my math right. We'll be back after the closing bell to talk about E-mini trades that resulted from the price action here in the SPY using today's levels. Catch you on the other side. We're back. It's after 7 p.m. And here's what we had going on right from the start. The SPY gapped up above our level at 592.88 right after the open, or right at the open. So that put us above this level. Uh, price climbed pretty aggressively, eventually hit the zone, which we said this morning is lines up around the ES or the E-mini 6,000 mark. So let's talk about the zone first and how it played out. You know that our strategy identifies zones sometimes. So when the SPY got to the zone, both extremes of the zone, the top and the bottom levels, ended up being reliable for four-point base hits in the E-minis. So if you were following the rules, these two trades right here, put a solid eight ES points in your pocket, pretty nice and straightforward, clean trades. It was reasonable to expect a bull bear battle in this zone. So you could have scaled in with E-mini contracts really anywhere in the middle of this zone for short trades until price got above and established some closes above this zone. So they just had to fight this thing for a while. But today wasn't just about the base hits in this zone. So gapping above this level and not pulling back to it within the first 15 minute window or so was essentially the bulls telling us that they still have dominance. They kept the momentum going. So if you were a bit more adventurous, maybe looking for a bigger play, you could have had the chance. You would have had the chance to ride that momentum if you jumped on board. So a trader willing to stay in this position, a long position, could have followed price all the way up to this zone. It's up to you. You could have added, I don't know, 10, a dozen points or so, depending on when you would have jumped on board. It's not something I normally do, but knowing that there probably wasn't any real areas of solid resistance on their way up, up to this ES 6000 level, meant that that was probably the destination today. So that's the kind of move where if you were watching closely, you could have really maximized that setup. I happened to get into a trade today, and that's what I did. I rode part of this up. So you can see when this starts, it's uh, 10 minutes, 12 minutes or so after 10 a.m. when this video starts recording the trade. So I bought one to start with. And they were kind of at an area that I thought they were going to probably fight if they get above. And then when they pull back down to my fumble threshold, I bought one more contract. So you can see them long two. I end up changing this to uh, six points. So I end up getting $600 with my two contract trade. Could have got more, but I just wanted to be out before anything else crazy happened. But it was pretty straightforward. I could have ridden it for more or trailed it. But I'm happy with six points on a trade that I typically don't advocate. Just jumping on board. Kind of like I feel like I'm chasing the trade chasing price. But in any case, that was it. You saw it. So the rest of this, I'll just scrub ahead. Uh, you'll see when they got to the bottom of the zone, it was about noon, 12 noon or so. So I was considering closing up shop. Really wasn't interested in taking it. This is the reason there are two logs. The playing the, by the rules log, where we treat each level the same. And this, this is why. So I can show what happens when you trade each level on the board every day the same way. So two official base hits because you had the one bottom of the zone. You see that if you chose to took that and then one at the top of the zone. This is really one big level. You know, you can scale in. I'm not really considering that a near miss because they just had not satisfied this entire entirety of this. This is actually the first time they hit 6,000, by the way, this little spike here. But what they did here is pretty predictable. So I'll just let this go forward a little bit longer and just let this go to the end of the day. But I wasn't messing around with the market. So they hit ES 6,000 and you know they might be wanting to go to, I don't know if they're going to make it that easy or not to go all the way to 600 and turn around or 
whatever. But I'm not going to do any type of analysis until after the market closes tomorrow. So two official base hit trades if you're playing by the rules. And then I got the one trade on the way up that you just saw. The first tracking log is the PBR log. And you can see the two base hits and all the profit potentials based on number of ES contracts traded at each level. And then the SAMS trades is the log that tracks all the trades I take. And here is the six point trade on the two contract position where I took a little out of that ride up to the zone. So to wrap it up today, pretty good example today of how the strategy can handle a trending day. For those strictly playing by the rules, you came away with a solid eight ES points from two base hits. And for the traders willing to ride that momentum a bit longer, there were opportunities to capture even more. That's the beauty of this strategy, I believe. Whether you're looking for consistency or willing to lean a bit more into risk, there is potential. As always, if you found value in today's recap, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you don't miss any updates. And if you're ready to get these levels and trade alongside me every day, head over to this site to learn more. You'll get access to the same levels and setups so you can build consistency in your own trading. Thanks for watching. Stay disciplined. I'll catch you in tomorrow's recap.